Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Stuart Lees and here are today's top stories. The last evacuation flight landed in the UK late Sunday. In total, 15,000 people were airlifted in the last two weeks. Among them, hundreds of Afghan Special Forces personnel. Some senior Tory MPs suggest they form a new regiment in the British Army similar to the Gurkhas. And protests against vaccine passes. It comes amid government plans that would require people to be fully vaccinated to enter nightclubs and other venues. After 20 years of military action in Afghanistan, the UK's deployment has finally ended. 15,000 people were evacuated over the last two chaotic weeks, including Britain's ambassador to the country. And today's David English brings us this report. Britain's last flight from Kabul landed at an RAF base in Oxfordshire late Sunday. This ends a 20-year deployment in Afghanistan. Foreign Office Minister James Cleverley says the government is sceptical about Taliban commitments. That we will judge the Taliban by their actions. They have made certain commitments about not uh, taking out reprisals on individuals, about facilitating exit. 15,000 people were airlifted out of Kabul since August the 13th. But it is feared up to 150 British nationals and 1,100 eligible Afghans were left behind. Cleverly says the UK government is willing to work with the Taliban for further evacuations. But we are going to keep working to get people out of Afghanistan that need to leave Afghanistan. Ambassador to Afghanistan, Sir Laurie Bristow, also arrived at Bryce Norton Air Base on Sunday. He says the embassy will reopen as soon as possible, but not in Kabul. We've had to leave Afghanistan for now, and the embassy will operate from Qatar for the time being. But we'll continue to stand by the people of Afghanistan working on humanitarian, diplomatic and security work. And above all, bringing to the UK Afghans and British nationals who still need our support. The last two weeks have seen soldiers evacuate people from amongst chaotic crowds at Kabul airport. Royal Air Force Deputy Commander Jerry Mayhew says they are pleased with the extraordinary efforts. That 165 missions were flown, it's probably our biggest effort since the Berlin airlift in terms of the air mobility fleet that you see behind us. The Royal Air Force says one evacuation flight carried 436 people, the highest capacity flight in their history. The Prime Minister praised the armed forces and said their sacrifice is not in vain. It was no accident that there's been no terrorist attack launched against Britain or any other Western country from Afghanistan in the last 20 years. During the UK's 20-year deployment in Afghanistan, over 450 troops lost their lives and thousands more were injured. David English, NTD News. Turkish Airlines say an Afghan evacuee delivered her baby girl on board a flight to the United Kingdom on Saturday. David Dorr reports. As Soma Nuri was leaving her old life behind in Afghanistan, she was also bringing a new one into the world. The 26-year-old evacuee gave birth to a baby girl on her flight to the UK on Saturday. That's according to a statement from Turkish Airlines. It said cabin crew helped deliver the baby as the plane flew at an altitude of 10,000 meters in Kuwaiti airspace. Nuri was on board the flight from Dubai to Britain's Birmingham when she began having contractions. The plane later landed in Kuwait as a precaution before continuing on its journey. The girl has been named Hava, Turkish Airlines said, and is in a good condition. Hundreds of Afghan military commandos have been evacuated to the UK. The Ministry of Defence is assessing how Britain can support them and utilise their skills. One proposal is to form a new army regiment like the Gurkhas. Entity's Trevor Piper has the details. Among those evacuated from Afghanistan to the UK this month were hundreds of Afghan Special Forces personnel. Many of them have been trained by British troops. According to the Telegraph newspaper, some senior Tory MPs propose they form a new British Army regiment like the Gurkhas. Reports say these elite Afghan troops played a key role in the evacuation efforts. 
They went undercover into crowds outside Kabul airport and even into Taliban-controlled areas at huge personal risk. They found Afghan translators and other eligible personnel, then handed them over to British forces. Conservative MP Tom Tugendhat served in Afghanistan. He says these Afghan personnel have proved their loyalty a thousand times, and he would love to see a regiment of Afghan scouts. Tobias Elwood, another Tory MP who served in Afghanistan, says these Afghan special forces could be blended into other army units or kept as one unit like the Gurkhas. Commenting on the proposal, an MOD spokesperson said, Thousands of Afghan nationals, including those who worked alongside our armed forces, are being welcomed into the UK, and we are currently assessing how to best support them and utilise their skills and expertise going forward. Trevor Piper, NTD News. The UK Professional Association of self caterers says a recent report suggesting a 40% rise in the cost of private accommodation holidays is inconsistent with their data. And today's Noel Wardrow talks with the chair of the association. Alistair Handyside is the chairman of PASC, the Professional Association of Self-Caterers UK. He told me the data as presented by Consumer Group Which and reported on BBC's Panorama is not supported by data he has researched. Yeah, I mean, we, what we asked the biggest booking platform uh, that, that we, we work with uh, to do uh, was tell us exactly how many bookings were placed in uh, 2019, how many in 2021, what the average price per person per night was in 2019, and what the average person per night or the per night cost was in 2021. And we got uh, uh, £47 million pounds worth of bookings in 2019, £56 million pounds worth of bookings in 2021. And they showed, as I said, on a per night basis, it was a 15% increase. And on a per person per night basis, it was 11%. These are live, paid for bookings. He added his data is 100% bulletproof. Um, I don't really know where they got their data from. Um, we would only ever publish data based on live paid for bookings. We wouldn't publish speculative data. Yes, I'm sure we could find somebody in um, Brighton who's charging 70% more than they were in 2019. You could probably find somebody in Brighton who's charging less. A, a, anecdotal data makes great clickbait stories but it's not the hard data that I've given you. He said he and many others advise people to book early to get the best deals. You book late on anything, you are going to pay a massive premium, uh, particularly in a market like this summer. A lot of the platforms are using um, uh, demand-led pricing like the airlines do. So if you have 20,000 people looking for one flat in Brighton, it will have an inflated price but it will be for a very small minority, as has been shown by our data. He said one area where costs have risen for the owner is due to increased cleaning during the pandemic. Um, cleaning costs have dramatically increased uh, uh, from 2019 to 2021. Proper businesses are offering COVID secure cleaning. Uh, and secondly, inflation is, for us, it's been way above the government statistics. You know, we pay more for fuel, we pay more for cleaning materials, we pay more for labour than the government percentages. So a 15% rise is below what we would have anticipated. We would have thought it would have been a 20% rise to cover those additional costs. He says for larger properties that could only open on July 19th, it's been an extraordinarily difficult time as they lost half the year in lockdown. Handyside said businesses are beginning to recover, but stories like this don't help them at all. Um, they've had purgatory for 16 months. Imagine being told that your business was illegal and that if you operated it, you could be fined up to £10,000. I mean, we're not bank robbers or drug dealers. We're self-caterers. Um, so, you know, it's been, it's been brutal and I, I would just like to say the biggest impact is probably not economic, it's been on the mental health of the owners, of whom nearly half admit to having had mental health difficulties during this pandemic. I contacted Witch to qualify their research methods for the report. A researcher was not available for a reply before broadcast. Neil Woodrow, NTD News. Protests continue as the government plans to make full vaccination a requirement to enter nightclubs and other venues with large crowds. 
Some are worried vaccine passes are a step too far. And today's general has this report. So we're here in central London covering um, the Freedom Rally, which has been happening every month for the last uh, few months. And there's a wide range of people here. I've been speaking to some of them, and here's what they've got to say. People need to be allowed to choose. They need to be able to say what they want to say and do as they wish with their bodies. And so we're making a stand here today for medical freedom. And we should be looking at different things. You know, the vaccine is part of the solution. So is vitamin C, D, zinc, ivermectin, you name it. Living a healthy life, exercising, diet, sleep. All these things are what we should be looking for instead of lockdowns and vaccine passports. Many here are parents who want their children to enjoy the same freedoms they did as they grew up. There are concerns around parental consent and COVID vaccines for school children, particularly when data shows children are at very low risk from COVID-19. We do not want children being vaccinated against their parents' wishes. And children and parents need to be informed. If we don't stand today, who will stand tomorrow? Who is going to stand up for our children? Who are going to stand up for the three four generations in the future to come because today it's vaccines what will it be tomorrow the government has faced criticism for their plans on vaccine passes not just at protests more than 200 organizations and individuals including business leaders journalists campaigners and church leaders have signed a declaration against any form of vaccine pass in the uk MPs are set to vote on vaccine passes after Parliament reopens next month. The details of the vote are yet to be announced. Jane Warrell, NTD News, London. Now to another gathering in London on Saturday. Followers of Falun Gong held a parade to call attention to the life benefits of their meditation practice, as well as the persecution they are suffering in China. NTD Zellroads has the story. <laughs> Followers of spiritual practice Falun Gong, also known as Falun Dafa, took to the streets of London on Saturday in their first parade since the pandemic hit. Caroline Yates from the UK Falun Dafa Association says they aimed to show people the beauty of the practice. In this time of the pandemic, when things are crazy, people are so stressed, we need this more than ever uh, to come back to our roots, to come back to our true self, come back to the beautiful heart of, of who we really are and the precious aspects of being human. Falun Gong adherents in China have been suffering human rights abuses since 1999. Nearly 4,700 deaths from persecution have been confirmed. John Dee from European Friends of Falun Gong urges people to help stop the abuses. I think it's very important to, um, to support uh, minority groups all over the world, but particularly in, in China. I think it's very important because the Chinese government has been very repressive for many years, not just with Falun Gong practitioners. Um, and I fear that uh, there's a possibility that they can get forgotten by the Western world if we don't speak out on their behalf. People stopped to watch a demonstration of the Falun Gong exercises opposite Parliament. It's, it's the first time I've uh, seen anything like this, and quite impressive, really. People are dedicated, aren't they, and to, to, to that practice. And uh, I believe they've been persecuted, which is a very, very bad thing, in, in, persecuted in China, I believe. Falun Gong is a meditation practice with teachings based on the principles of truthfulness, compassion and tolerance. Earl Rhodes, NTD News. Still to come, the story of a former Afghan minister with a new job as a bicycle courier in Germany is going viral. He shares his thoughts on a most unusual career change. I could have been uh, one of the corrupt ministers could have made uh, millions of dollars. To a story of a former Afghan minister now who, after leaving office, started a new life in Germany last year, 
as a bicycle courier. Engineer's Joy Dugit brings us this report. Cycling in orange uniform, this courier is ready for his evening shift in the German city of Leipzig. Prior to that, he served as Minister of Communications in Afghanistan. I was in before minister, serving, still serving people, and now I'm a Lefrando uh, career, driving uh, Lefrando's services to people, uh, still is a serving people. The 49-year-old moved to Germany last September with degrees in IT and telecom. But without speaking German, his chances of landing a relevant job were slim. I could have been uh, one of the corrupt minister, could have made uh, millions of dollars and would have bought buildings here, hotels here, like or in Dubai and other parts, and I wouldn't even be needed to work. But I'm proud that uh, I'm, my soul is happy and I have nothing uh, to, to be feeling guilty. After the Taliban seized control, Afghans started fleeing to Germany, seeking asylum. The former minister says Afghans don't want to fight anymore. Afghans are tired of war. So was the military. 20 years they fought along the international community with this en endless war. He served the Afghan government for two years before leaving the office in 2018. Joy Dugid, NTD News. The Turkish foreign minister said on Sunday that Europe would also be affected if migration from Afghanistan turns into a crisis and that his country is already doing its share. Turkey has sufficiently carried out our moral and humanitarian responsibilities regarding migration. Turkey cannot take on a new refugee burden. He spoke after talks with his German counterparts. The Taliban taking power in Afghanistan has fueled worries in the European Union of a repeat of the 2015 refugee crisis. That's when nearly a million people fleeing war and poverty in Syria crossed to Greece from Turkey before traveling north to wealthier states. To stem the flow, the EU reached an agreement with Turkey in 2016 for it to host Syrian refugees. That number now totals 3.7 million, the world's largest refugee population. Turkey has been reinforcing measures along its eastern border to prevent crossings from Afghanistan. And in other news, Ukraine has opened a new site in Chernobyl for storing used nuclear fuel. The facility will reduce reliance on Russia. Entity's John Robson has more on this. Ukrainian nuclear energy company Energoatom is showing off its new storage facility. The deputy chief of Atom Project Engineering says it will change how Ukraine's nuclear sector functions. Exploring this technology in this facility will mean we are not dependent on other countries. We involve Ukrainian entities in the engineering and exploitation. We also involve them in the building process. He says they will no longer have to send used fuel to Russia, but will store it locally. Ivan Yuvenko, who has worked in Chernobyl for 20 years, says everything is done slowly for safety reasons. It's comfortable and safe. The speed of this truck when it's full of fuel is 320 meters per hour maximum. It's a special regime for full trucks to prevent bumping. When it's empty, it's 610 meters per hour. The facility is currently at a testing phase. The containers are empty, but one day they will be doing the job for real. This is the first time, and possibly the last, the facility will be shown to the media. Once operational, the area will be guarded by the Ukrainian army and access strictly controlled. Joanne Robson, NTD News. A French graffiti artist has created a monumental mountaintop project. He says he aims to lift people's spirits by capturing the childlike wonder of watching clouds drift by. NTD's Joy Dugard brings us the story. High in the Swiss Alps, a gigantic work of graffiti art on a mountainside. The 1,500 square metre painting by French artist Saïp graces the summit of Molson Peak. 
Here I painted a little boy who is blowing just like those toys you had when you were a kid that blows bubbles and creates clouds. And the idea is that my work always interacts with the environment, and I feed on the environment, and the work feeds on the environment. There's a bit of both. And I have to create a real synergy between the work, the space around it, and the aesthetics of the place. The piece is called a nouveau souffle, which means a new lease of life. I think we live in a world that induces anxiety and we need a little lightness. So I believe that the clouds are also a bit about dreams and imagination. Saip uses biodegradable paints made from natural pigments like coal and chalk. What's special about my work, in my opinion, is that there is real research and development. And then I developed a paint that is meant to be eco-responsible. In general terms, it's water, charcoal, chalk and casein, which is a protein in milk. We're in the right region for that, which I use as a kind of natural glue. Saip is known for massive works of graffiti on grass, best seen from the air. His previous sites range from a South African shanty town to the lawn at the United Nations in Geneva. Joy Dugid, NTD News. And finally, when touring Paris, you might want to see the Eiffel Tower and sail on the River Seine. Now, an amphibious bus called a duck can take you to do both. NTD's 88 Ken has more on this. A bus speeding down a slipway into the River Seine. Has it taken a wrong turn? No, it's the latest tourist attraction in Paris. A bus drives along city streets, then converts into a river-going boat. I just thought it was like cool how we got to go in the water, and it was kind of unlike anything else we've done in Paris so far, so it was a lot of fun. Amphibious tour buses, known as ducks, have been used for years to ferry tourists around London. They are often modified military assault craft, but the Paris version is a new purpose-built design made in France. So here you can see the front of the bus is shaped like a boat's prow to allow it to sail in the water more easily than if it were a squared bus front, which would slow it down. Here is the access footbridge which is used for boarding because, compared to a traditional bus, this deck is particularly high to be as far from the water as possible for safety reasons. The tours are run by a firm called Canards de Paris, French for Ducks of Paris. The company says it's the first amphibious vehicle to gain a license to carry tourists in the French capital. The wheels stay in the water. People often ask if they fold up or not, but they stay in the water and they can even help us navigate. The front wheels are so big that they allow us to direct the bus, so the driver uses the steering wheel on the ground but also on the water. In land mode, the duck carries passengers to sites such as Arc de Triomphe and Eiffel Tower. Then the duck switches to boat mode, engaging its propeller to sail along the River Seine. It was very different from the usual, but it was very nice. The duck has safety features for sailing, including life vests suspended from the ceiling. It also has an anchor stowed in a box on the side. Eddie Aitken, NTD News. That's the news for today, and thanks for tuning in. I'm Stuart Lees. Thank you for watching our daily news show on YouTube. You can also watch our other programming on Channel 190 on Sky TV or on Freeview via Channel Box on Channel 271. In the meantime though, please give this video a like and hit subscribe to our channel. Have a good day.